So welcome back to the next talk here at Phosphogy 2021. I welcome Daniel Villavuel Torres and uh, Andres Armesto from Buenos Aires. So we go to Argentina now where our conference takes place. And we want to hear from you about phosphor tools for data-driven decisions. And um, you both are geo geeks and you are data scientists working for the Buenos Aires city government. And you have a big mission as you announced. So your mission is to turn Buenos Aires into a data-driven city. And uh, you are part of a team leading digital transformations in innovation initiatives and we are very excited to hear from you now what's going on in your project so let's start the stage is yours and um, i will add the slides and um, yeah okay thank you very much astrid um, so i hope everyone can hear me well i want to welcome all of you to buenos aires you know, virtually and to and hopefully everyone's having a good force for g i certainly know that i am uh, having a good time right now so welcome to our presentation um, it's titled data driven decisions public transport services in buenos aires and it's uh, about the case of bus operations uh, key performance indicators so maybe just to a uh, little rundown of uh, what we're gonna go over today um, we're gonna First, give you a little introduction to the city of Buenos Aires, to um, some of the, uh, the challenges that we face as city officials, and we're gonna uh, focus a little bit on, on uh, one specific, uh, a few specific challenges. And then uh, we're gonna show you a little bit of the methodology that we developed using Phosphor-G tools to, to face the challenges that we, that we face daily. And finally, we're gonna close with uh, a few lessons that we learned along the way and some final thoughts. So just to give you a little bit of an introduction to uh, ourselves, we, you know, as Astrid said, I'm Daniel Villarroel. I'm a data scientist at the government of the city of Buenos Aires, and uh, I'm a huge uh, geo geek. I have a degree in geoinformation, so this is what I, I love to do, and I'm having a, a blast being here. And with me is Andres. Andres, you want to take it? Yes, of course. Well, uh, as Daniel said, I am Andres. Uh, my current role is a data analytics and visualization manager, uh, also on, in Buenos Aires city government. And I, I am also a volunteer in Engineers Without Borders Argentina. As Daniel, I am very happy to be here with you today. And I will start to, to tell you a little bit about uh, the context. Uh, first, uh, you may or may not be familiarized with uh, to, with where we are right now, but this is an overview of the of the world and our position uh, alongside it. Uh, that that white area is Argentina, and uh, and that yellow uh, <laughs> shape is of course the city of Buenos Aires, where we would be talking about. A little bit more about uh, stats. Uh, the surface of the city is uh, more than 200 kilometers squared. Uh, its population is around 3 million people. And uh, in terms of GDP, uh, it's a very important uh, place, both in a national level and in a regional level. And now I will do a brief introduction uh, to our data strategy uh, inside government. Uh, our area was created around two years ago and the focus of, of it is to, to turn the government into a data-driven government. So for that, uh, we have four lines of work. Uh, three of them can be seen as pillars where we focus on data governance, data analysis, and of course, making data available both to inside users, between, in, in, to users inside government and to users outside government, for instance, citizen or even some, some actors in the public sector. And adding to these three lines, of course, we have the, the challenge of turning the organization into a data-driven culture, which, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's more focused on working 
with the people and not only on processes or analysis. And now uh, I will tell you a little bit, I will dive into our use case, uh, which as Daniel said, is uh, the BUS, BUS operations KPIs. And uh, we wanted to start by telling you a little bit about the initial situation we, we faced. First of all, uh, as, you, as you may have known or already, uh, public transport services are one area which usually is associated with high amounts of, ex of subsidies. So that, that makes uh, a very important thing to focus on when you are managing budgets and, and everything inside government. Then uh, uh, indicators, like when, when you have to manage, of course, a, a budget, you have to understand what things are important. And in this case, uh, there, are, there are laws that, that, that determine or, or that, that are necessary to, to let me rephrase. Uh, the indicators allow to calculate the proper amount of subsidies. So uh, in this case, it's very important to have reliable indicators to, of the operations to calculate the, the amount of subsidies involved. And the third one, uh, the, the third one situation we face at the beginning is the available data. We use data that wasn't specifically uh, designed for analytics purpose, but rather to, to manage payments and clearing the financial accounts. So uh, that was one of the, the things we faced. Yes, now I will talk to you about uh, some concepts we use along the presentation and we thought uh, it's important to understand the, the process. Uh, when we talk about bus trip, I wanted to, to, to give it some context related. Uh, what is a bus trip for us? Of course, uh, you have a, a starting terminal where you, where buses start uh, its, its trip and an end terminal. In the middle, of course, there are different stops where passengers can come up and down. And all of this uh, has data associated to it, both in the, in the starting time, the end time, and, and the intermediate time, of course. And if you see the, the, dot, the, the dotted line, that would be also uh, coordinates uh, in a database. And uh, one of the things are really important to, to get proper KPIs is the trip identification, which would be like a number or, or a, yes, an ID that would tell, okay, this is the beginning and this is the end of, of this trip. Uh, a little bit more about KPIs. Uh, if you search for them, there are many of them, but we focus on these seven, uh, and mainly because th those were the one involved in the in the calculations of the subsidies and the ones our area of our users, which was also uh, an area inside government, asked us for for calculation. As you can see, most of them are related to to the the supply side, which would be like the transport infrastructure. But we also had uh, data from the passengers usage, which is uh, very important because you, you can understand how the, the different citizens use that uh, services. Now I will tell you a little bit in concrete about uh, the challenges we faced. First, uh, as we are a, a service area, we, we provide data services to other areas of government. So each project uh, requires for us to understand the problem domain. And in that process, of course, it takes times and meetings, and, but it was one of the issues we, we faced. The second one, it's a uh, big geodata. Uh, prior to this project, we didn't have uh, any experience in the team at handling big geodata. And the third one is, as I already mentioned, the unclean data. Uh, we, we knew that there were serious issues of quality, uh, so we had to develop a, a methodology robust enough to handle it. And now my, my friend Daniel will tell you a little bit more about it. 
Thank you, Andres. Um, so everything Andres just said uh, is really important to keep in mind uh, going forward with the presentation, and I'm going to try to be as, as clear as possible. Um, what I want to show you is some, uh, some of our maybe thought process that we went through uh, designing a, a solution to this problem of defining individual trips in order to uh, calculate KPIs, so key, key performance indicators of um, transport, transportation in the city. And I'm going to show you uh, just a little bit about uh, what the data looks like. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the tools that we use, the Phosphor-G tools, and, and a little toy, toy example of the, what the process looks like. So this is what our data looks like um, in general. So just imagine we have hundreds of thousands and hundreds of millions, actually, of GPS records per month. So every GPS record is a line on this table. And uh, this means that uh, every bus in the city of you know, every uh, transport line, et cetera, is generating a record every four minutes or so. So it's a lot of data. And this is what we mean by, uh, by big, big data in our example. And in an ideal uh, world, we would just have to use uh, these fields called uh, file ID and, and maybe direction in order to solve our problem. So file ID supposedly uh, means an individual trip. Uh, but if this were a, a, a field that was correctly created, uh, we wouldn't be here pre uh, presenting you uh, this presentation. So we really couldn't, tr couldn't trust this uh, file ID and direction uh, fields. So we had to develop a methodology that took into account the geographical aspect, not just the uh, registers and this field. And these are the fields that we talk about when we say uh, geo data. So these are the, the geo fields, the latitude and longitude, so the position in, time, in space and also the position in time of our GPS points um, are what we mean uh, by geodata. And these are the fields that we ended up using and making a use case out of this. Uh, so we can, well, not so we can show you, but we're, we're glad that we can show you what we did here. So this was the data. Uh, it's big and clean geodata. And what about the tools? What, what we used, um, we, uh, since our data was so big, we couldn't, uh, use our regular tools that we used to, like, you know, regular Postgres database with PostGIS uh, that many of you uh, for sure are familiar with. So we had to go to Spark. And if you don't know Spark, um, there are entire conferences on Spark that uh, you can maybe go. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. But Spark is an sort of like an, an, an analytics engine that allows for cluster computing. So computing uh, big chunks of data in different computers, not just one computer. What I do want to uh, talk to you about is GeoMesa. GeoMesa is, um, is uh, a project, it's a, a Phosphor-G project, and it's a suite of tools that allows us to make Spark understand geographical data. And it's, it's an actively developed uh, project. Uh, actually, just maybe a half hour or an hour ago, there was a state of GeoMesa talk uh, that was really exciting. So this is uh, really um, being developed actively and it's got a, a, a bright future, we think. So what we did, we, we used GeoMesa in order to let Spark uh, do two things. Uh, understand geometry data types. So um, not just your regular uh, integer and, and character types, but uh, let it understand uh, points, lines, and polygons and some derivations of this. But also what GeoMesa does is it allows Spark to use um, geometry functions. So uh, spatial functions that, are, that allow for computation on these geographical geo, uh, geometry data types. So we can grab a, uh, a whole chunk of a collection of points and make a line out of them that I'm going to show you in a bit. Or we can uh, make um, queries. Um, on based on the geographical location of this data, or we can you know process make some calculations of distance, etc. So this was the tools, and I want to show you what um, a little toy example of what we use the tools on this data um, uh, for this for this project. So first of all, what we had to do was construct 
point geometries from GPS records. So transform this table of data into actual points on the map. And what you're seeing here is um, an example of um, one day of data for one bus line. So these are all the individual GPS records. So the second, the second thing that we had to do was uh, find which of these uh, GPS records uh, were near the terminal. So that's how we defined when a trip started and when a trip ended. So once we knew um, where, when and where a trip started, we were able to um, construct line geometry, like I just mentioned in the slide before. So we took a collection of, of points that were uh, semantically one trip. So that meant uh, one start and one end, uh, like Andres showed you before. And we constructed line geometries from these. And these were our EGV. These were our individual trips. And once we had these trips, we were able to, you know, know when a trip starts and when a trip ends. So on, on this information, we can aggregate it um, over every bus line or, you know, every month or every day or every other, some, some other characteristic that we can think on, think of and calculate these, these different KPI. So if you know when a trip starts and when a trip ends, you can know its direct, its duration and length, or if you know um, what time of the day or night, um, you can know if it, you know, happened at night or not. And that's a different indicator that we were asked to calculate. And you, we can also make some, um, some calculations on, on the demand side. So how many passengers were actually using uh, this, these buses on these individual trips. And oh, here, here is an, a little animation of what the process looks like. So remember what you're looking at is one bus line in one day of January of this year. So remember that this was calculated for every bus line that goes into the city of Buenos Aires uh, and it's about 150 bus lines. So this was done, actually the example that you're seeing is just one day of data. So you can sort of uh, make up how, how much data we were working with. So this is one day of one bus line, I think hundreds of lines and you know tens of days. Next one, please. Thank you. So what we were able to do was mostly go from about, well, well over um, 100 million GPS records per month that we couldn't really make sense of um, to uh, just a bit over 1 million identified individual trips. So this is one bus going from start to finish. Um, and I think I forgot to say, but the different colors that you're seeing are the different branches of one line. So we were even, we were even able to identify uh, uh, trips with that level of detail. I think you're muted, Andres. Thank you, Danny. Okay, well, given uh, all Danny has, has just show, showed, uh, I wanted to, to close uh, with, two, with two slides where I tell you a little bit about what we learned along the process and uh, some final thoughts or conclusions. First, uh, regarding lessons learned, Manipulating geographic data can be really hard. Uh, in the process of doing this, uh, we tried different alternatives. We moved from one methodology or tool for, from, to the other until we came up with, this, with the tool uh, we found the best and we are able to do it. Uh, regarding the project in general, uh, we found that our early launch and think about, thinking about production, productionalized the, the analysis uh, can be also very critical to success, uh, particularly because, uh, as we said, we are uh, an area that provides data services to other areas inside government. So uh, making data available to users at the proper time can, is really important. And uh, a third lesson we've found is that whenever possible, we sh you should focus on improving data quality at the source. In this case, we had to come up with a whole new methodology or workaround to, to prevent from unclean data. And uh, to, to final messages regarding our presentation, uh, we were able to, to develop a, a geo process that uh, was very 
uh, successful at identifying individual trips and using, of course, Phosphor G tools. The second one, which is not, uh, which is which is actually really important, uh, we managed to work between different areas of government, and and as people who come from the public sector can know that, of course, it always has some some implications. And the third one uh, is that even or despite data quality issues, we were we were able to generate information and KPIs to our users. Uh, from the available source and um, actually we're really happy because uh, the process was a uh, success and with that uh, I wanted to thank you all and of course thank you Danny as well because of the, the project we we carried together yes thank you you too for the presentation and to see what's going on in Buenos Aires big applause please from the audience to our two speakers and yeah it was impressive to see um, the big data you are handling and how you can um, solve your problems with phosphor g tools and uh, the introduction to geomesa and spark and let's see whether we have questions so we have three questions and the first one is, what tools are you using to visualize your trajectories? Sure, I think I can, I, I think I can answer that. Um, visualizing this data is, is really hard. And actually, GeoMesa has a, a very good features that allows us to uh, see this data through maybe serving it through GeoServer and things like that. Uh, these are things that we did not use. So since we showed you an example of one day, what we did was export the line geometries to a PostGIS data, uh, database and, and just uh, visualize them in, in QGIS for, for this example. So we're really, uh, the, uh, constructing the line geometries is sort of a thing we need to do, but in order to calculate the KPIs, but we don't really need to visualize them. We're not doing visual analysis on this data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the next question. And you talked about this incorrect data. And there's a question, where is the incorrect data being filtered out or corrected? Is it by you guys or by Spark or by GeoMesa? You want to take that, Andres? <laughs> Um, well, yes, of course. Basically, the, the incorrect data uh, is associated with uh, some manual process that every every driver has to, to input. So that's basically one field inside the table that we can uh, rely on. So uh, in order to, to prevent, uh, to, to avoid using that field, we develop this methodology. But also, uh, for instance, if you if, if you saw the data, you, you saw that at, during the night, the GPS records were turned on. So you get a lot of signals inside the terminals. So yes, part of the process was clean with data filtering uh, with geospatial queries, but also uh, some fields we didn't use because of data quality issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So there's a next a question. How is the data on passengers volume gathered? I think Andy, you can take that one too, maybe. Uh, well, yes, I, I, I don't have a proper uh, amount of, of rows today because as you know, like in the last two years uh, with pandemic and everything uh, that, val that value changed a lot. But uh, for you to have a, an, an approximate number, when we uh, received like the monthly uh, data from passengers, it was around uh, 80 gigs of data every month. So uh, yes, in terms of growth, of course, there were millions and in this order, in the same order of the GPS data, which were like 100, 100 million. What? Yes, 100 million G GPS records. It was amount, the same amount in the, the same order of the data, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think I can maybe add a little bit to that. And if you were asking about how, how we uh, 
you know, counted passengers. Uh, it had to do with some auxiliary tables that we were provided that linked uh, points in space and time um, to uh, to uh, transactions on the cards, uh, transportation cards. So we were able to to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, thank you. And there's a last question, and um, it's about feedback. Did you ever get to feedback information to the bus operator, like this bus equipment is broken? Um, sadly, no. We, we weren't able to to give feedback to the to the bus companies, uh, as you can imagine. Of course, between the companies and us, there was an area of government, and of course, there were like more than one hundred companies. So. Uh, we we didn't get across all that to in the scope of this project mm -hmm. okay but maybe it's for the future something um that could happen huh? good so that's uh that are all the questions from the audience thanks again to you too and all the best for your project and hope the buses and the traffic will will um be used more and more when the pandemic is over and you get more data, even more data. So thanks a lot and enjoy Phosphogy. Thank you.